Hello and welcome to the Wadfam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. I'm Andrew Sabo. And today we are talking about part two of Plan B. This one is entitled Collision Course. It's titled, not entitled. Entitled. Oh. E-N. Titled. Uh, is that the same thing? As What's the difference between being like entitled to something? No, entitled is with an I-N. That's oh, like you're... Like, like full of yourself. Yes. Like you deserve something. Yeah. Entitled is, I think... The same as saying it's titled, but fancier? <laughs> I guess, like, this, uh, yeah, entitled. It's entitled. No, because you're right. Like, yeah. you know, book written, entitled, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. It's like kind of like a like a past tense, more like per- perhaps entitled is the full and then sh- titled is the uh, shortened version. Yeah. Like, the old English entitled perhaps? Entitled is like the action of being, mm-hmm. of like giving something a title title music no <laughs> no no now no <laughs> okay sorry, well, i'm glad I, that we've established we're not that. sponsored by title i'm sorry jay-z you can keep your money i don't want it it's dirty, <laughs> dirty. um uh so it's uh plan b part two collision course it's episode 485 of adventures and odyssey <laughs> yes sir <laughs> i'm glad we started out very strong yeah you that's that's why everyone listens for those real real good debates Quality about things. entitled versus entitled i genuinely entitled. didn't know <laughs> i genuinely did not know because you said entitled and i was like oh that's funny you know you just said the wrong word <laughs> <laughs> nope nope i'm just wrong it's cool it's been yeah. a long day <laughs> so it's a great episode part two yes of the plan b yep uh the the most responsible series of an adventures in odyssey yep so this episode starts incredibly abruptly. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's—I mean—so it's a part two. So there was no intro like there was for the first one. Even right. though the intro for part one was kind of abrupt, this is yeah. just guitar rift. You're back yep. into it. Yeah. And uh, and boy, is it dramatic. Yeah, because there there's a the broadcast version has the parental warning tacked yeah. onto the front and also has like a recap mm-hmm. of the previous episode. Oh. But if you're listening to it on album, all you get is the boing, 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 yeah, and then, then, and then yeah. we cut into a conversation um, that we, that we ended on with um, uh, the, the Shanks, Mrs. Shanks, yes, yes talking to Mrs. Jack Shanks and Joanne, yeah, with a terrible, terrible register at her voice, yeah. Oh my word! It's Talking. actually horrifying. Oh, it's haunting. I like, never realized it until you pointed it out. Because then, when I listened to it, um, listened to it for this episode, I was just, I was just like, oh, oh wow, this is like I always kind of imagined this fairly sweet old lady, like you know Katrina's mom, but like I'm imagining a very mentally unwell yeah. person. She is like shook. frail. Yeah, yeah. Finally, time I told you about. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it is, it's actually terrifying. Um, and really, I, I think a credit to the voice acting and also to, like, the sound engineering to make that happen. Because yeah. it's, like, as an adult, I feel disturbed. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. She's, yeah, she's clearly not in a good place. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she kind of gets into this whole thing of, of being like, yeah, so I didn't really ask like i didn't really know what armitage does Mm -hmm. she says quote for the most part i stayed out of it it wasn't my place yeah which like kind of like i i want to think that that's more of the time oh yeah well especially because she's she would have been old that's like yeah i mean she's probably in my head like 60s 70s yeah if not yeah yeah, probably 60s 70s yeah so so i want to think that that's more reflection over older generation and and less less like uh, focus on the family (laughs) focus on the family being like no 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 no. don't don't like don't go into business yeah don't 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 talk don't talk to your husband about his work and i'm like wait no wait no what i'm sorry what (laughs) please no but but it does stand over there with connie and be 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 a woman (laughs) but it does it does seem like a older generation thing more yeah. than it seems like a focus on the family agenda thing well and also the just... whole like and how shook she feels like you can totally you can you can imagine her like saying like you know kind of like in a 
a kind of Mad Men esque situation where it's just people are just kind of filling the roles that they believe that are there for them, and uh, and it doesn't really matter what they don't know and what they do know because it's not their place because it's not their role. Yep. Um, yeah. Which is you know. I'm glad that we don't do that anymore or, yeah. or do it less because it does yeah. make me feel icky. Yeah, a little bit. But then uh, she she brings up the fact that as so we find out Armitage was on the board for Andromeda mm-hmm. um, and that through that he chose like he singled out Campbell County Community College as the place he wanted Novacom to do this research yeah which is well huge. or andromeda to do the research yeah. rather not not actually Novacom. which is really him swinging his weight because he said obviously in the last episode like he got him that job right and so you've got to wonder like one how smart is eugene that right. his father not even father-in-law was like right this man is gonna do research that's gonna change the world right and also two how high up is he? That yeah. He's swinging his weight around to get it in the middle of podunk nowhere. Right. Or the center of the universe, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is It is a thing of like, it's you have, to, there's got to be a level of, um, he's got to be so high up. Yeah. In order to be like, so we should have this cutting edge research done at a community college in a suburb of Chicago. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah i mean i'm i it kind of closes to some extent the plot hole that we kept poking of like why is novacom here (laughs) like well of why in the world is this research being done at campbell county community college like campbell university campbell university it doesn't it doesn't make sense but when you get the kind of like he wanted to he wanted to you know armitage Mm -hmm giving an opportunity to someone who you know has a relationship with his daughter and who he sees as a potential like son-in-law well and it's also i think a credit to eugene not only on an intellectual standpoint but like a moral one as well like where he feels like he can trust him and he can you know give this really actually huge deal uh uh, of responsibility to him right um so like that's i think that's also important right uh yeah, and it also just shows that Andromeda has some serious nepotism. I guess, I guess, part of it at least. <laughs> uh, keep it in the family. Yep. Like the and bloodline. and and focus on the family and f- focus on keeping it in the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that seems on brand. <laughs> so then we uh, so then we cut to wit with Dean Rogers, right? Yep. Which is kind of like. You could choose to keep this in or not. <laughs> yeah. But I have it, it in my notes. It's it's just big stick. Wit just coming in being like, listen here, guys. We're beyond the path of, like, privacy and stuff. Like, Eugene's basically my kid. We need to, like, like what's going on? You need to tell me what's happening. Yep. And he gives. <laughs> Which is kind of like, I guess, you know plot device to keep the thing going and everything right. like that and also you know wit being a commanding figure in the community but like wow yeah if i could just walk up to somebody in the bank and be like listen what gives with insider trading like we're beyond yeah. the point of privacy here <laughs> people's lives are at stake and they're like yeah this is what everybody's doing no you're you're spot on <laughs> which kudos to him that's yeah. really cool and like it really makes you like wit more yeah um, yeah, and, and so he, he does the same thing near the end of this episode um, with um, uh, uh, frickin' um, uh, Borland. Yeah, yeah. The, where he does yeah. he does the the FBI guy where he yeah. does basically the same thing of just like right. uh, just shoot so, straight with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's what's going on here? But but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll hit get that. to that later. <laughs> Which okay, before we keep going. An absolute metric butt ton happens in this episode. Like, yes. so much happens in this episode. This is, in a lot of the... Like, it reminded me a lot of Grand Opening Part 2. Yeah. Where everything is coming together. Yeah. We get so much stuff. Mm. It, I mean, the Collision Course name is spot on. Yeah, Because we're exactly. getting all of these different threads tying together, like, even more closely than we realized before. Yeah. So basically, 
the Dean Rogers talks to him about the radio wave study and explains that to him. And it definitely flushes out the idea of, so why is what Andromeda slash Novacom slash Mitch slash whatever is so important? And that's because if you can convert brain waves into radio waves, the benefits for technology are insane. Like, right. you know, you can move a mouse without thinking about it. Like on a computer, you can activate right. light switches, whatever. Yep. Um, and then also, yeah, it's uh, absolutely like you you understand why there's so much security about it. Yeah. So in that way, that's kind of one loose end that's being tied up. So right. we understand exactly what's at stake here. Yeah. And they're really they're really focusing in on positive benefits mm-hmm. for it here, um, which is important. Yeah. Because, like, that's the... And you can see, like, this is the reason Eugene got roped into this research. Because yeah. not only just because, like, you know, his fa- his future father-in-law was saying, like, hey, here's a good opportunity for you. But because he genuinely, like, wants to help. Um, and then... But the conversation kind of ends with Wit being, like... None of this explains why Eugene took off with the research. And yeah. the Dean kind of being like, yeah, we haven't pieced that together either. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the other things in this conversation that just kind of jumped out to me is the a line that um, has really uh, stuck with me and is fairly yeah. emblematic, uh, yeah. which is the the dean saying, something tells me you have more hobbies than An ice, ice cream, cream, Mr. Whitaker. Yep. Yeah, it stuck with me too. Yeah. And the way he says it, like the delivery is fantastic. It's just like, yeah. huh, you... You meddlesome little like yeah like this is this is a lot bigger like you're a lot bigger than I know and also this is a lot bigger than I know yeah um this episode more than any of the others we have hit on so far is what I think of when I think of Nova Comp yeah exactly I exactly. think of I think of this I think of you know the disappeared Eugene I think of the brainwave study yep I think of um, I think it epitomizes it. Yeah, we get Dent, and we get um, a lot of a lot of Mr. Aram Charles. stuff. We get Charles. Like the there's so many there's it, so many things that are really really well done. I mean, it's, yeah. and it's it's exactly it's exactly all of the individual plot threads that we've established over episodes. You know, different storylines, whether it's. So the complications between Connie and Mitch and then the complications of Mitch and Novacom and Mitch and Wit and that coming together and the trust issues that we've talked about and like also Wit being spread thin because of everything that's going on and um, kind of feeling overwhelmed and things kind of getting bigger than he is. Um, it's it, – it like kind of paints a picture of like them all – all the threads kind of like slowly tw- – like – kind of roping together almost yeah um and into this like really cool and thinking about it in hindsight genuinely impressively done like this is the kind of plot that you can get when you spend god like 10 episodes yeah. setting it up like oh yeah you know over what i mean 10 20 minute episodes that's 200 minutes of established plot line yeah there's what i think 13 episodes prior to this one yeah like it's so, yeah there's a lot it's a lot of setup but it, like it such a good payoff and well and they, are, and they do this setup in, in a pretty engrossing way all things yep. considered yeah there aren't too many of those episodes i mean you've heard our, us discuss but there weren't too many where we were like okay i could have done without this yeah yeah for sure and like and it was only probably in the first three maybe that it was just kind of just a little bit of it and it was kind of jokey and whatever right. and yeah um yeah, we've had some episodes that were lighter, but like it's serious time now. Yeah, and we've got we've got a Paul McCusker intro. We got electric guitar. It's Novacom time, yeah. <laughs> and that's and this is I mean this is exactly why I wanted to do this show just because this is why I like Odyssey. Yeah, it, you get a very you get a cohesive universe, you get good voice acting, you get compelling plot line. Like, yep, this is in my experience audio drama at its finest. Yeah, I I fully agree. Uh, the only other thing I want to hit on uh, before moving on is uh, this conversation with and the dean are having. Mm-hmm. He makes mention to he the the dean says you know they've been looking for Eugene, um, and which says did you did you guys ransack his apartment? Yeah, 
and they and he's like no and he's like you think andromeda might have done it and it's kind of left hanging there yeah and so that brings a little clarity to what we talked about last, last week episode, we were we yeah. were we were discussing like did eugene ransack his own apartment like what happened there mm-hmm. and so it sounds like now we're being it's implied that eugene grabbed all of his stuff mm-hmm. and split and then mm-hmm. they came in and looked for stuff and couldn't find it, which makes so much That's more so sense. sense. Yeah. I was like, I'm mad. I'm mad that we didn't get to that conclusion last time. But. Yeah, yeah. But but it also, I mean, great job on them on answering the question. So then the this the next scene is um, Jack and Joanne in Chicago. Kind of, in Chicago, kind of like reeling, mm-hmm. driving back or walking or whatever from their conversation with, with um, Brandon? well or with with uh, mrs shanks oh and mrs shanks that's right yeah which brandon was there for that as yeah. well but them kind of processing through all that and uh someone comes, comes up, up to them on the street yeah and is like you want to hear the truth about eugene meltzner yeah and they're like uh yeah yes please who are you and he's like i'm arthur dent and then which, they- We've heard him before. Yes, he I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, which I, I, I obviously knew it was Dent before he opened his mouth, not and because because he's got such a distinctive voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm Arthur Dent. I mean, that's a terrible impression, but yeah, he's uh, a yeah. yeah. But again, it's like character coming back in, really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and so he says he has to go, um, but to meet him in the dumpster in the alley next to the andromeda building yeah this isn't even like we're not even yeah it it cuts back and forth between the dean and jack and joanne like twice yeah. like so it, there's like they're basically the wit and the dean and jack and joanne and arthur dent like each have a conversation but they're kind of intercut with each other a little bit yeah but yeah the the basic gist is that he's like we're gonna set up you know a rendezvous point yes um so they set up a meeting he dent sets up a meeting with the allens at 5 30 yeah at the andromeda building yeah um the other thing here is that that i was like oh that's very interesting is jack and joanne are taking a flight from chicago to odyssey yeah which is also which is when you said like a suburb of chicago earlier it's it's, gotta be further than that yeah i mean my guess is it's probably it's my guess is it's in state oh it's definitely in state yeah because they drive there in a right. day right yeah so yeah but maybe like the difference between flying from philadelphia to pittsburgh kind of situation right that's kind of what i was wondering too if it's if it's that sort of thing but also why wouldn't you just drive well yeah but i kind of get it because you know jack and joanne yeah like they're older, they've got money, they might as well just fly. You might, you might as well just fly and don't have to worry about the traffic. Yeah. But the other thing is, does does that mean Odyssey has an airport? Th- that's what I have in my <laughs> notes. Odyssey, yeah, get on the next flight to Odyssey, he says later. Or like, I'm yeah, like, Odyssey has an airport? Yeah. What? Yeah. That, Why? That seems odd. They have a, uh, wait, no, but didn't we establish that they have skydiving? Maybe same place yeah maybe they have skydiving i don't know that they were talking about bitch and connie talked about skydiving i don't know if they were planning on doing that in odyssey yeah but uh but yeah odyssey so has maybe. odyssey has an airport i guess not only that but i mean like there's an airport true not only does odyssey have an airport but there is more than one flight yeah within like 12 hours to odyssey yeah the next because jack and joanne were like well we dense like you got to get on the seven o'clock flight to odyssey and jack and joanne are like oh we were planning on just going tomorrow morning he's like nope change it to the seven o'clock i was like there is both seven o'clock and tomorrow morning yeah what is this <laughs> how much commerce is there between yeah. flying from like the proverbial philadelphia to pittsburgh yeah <laughs> like what yeah it's... i uh it's odd for sure and that's something that has always messed with my like ge- like internal geographical map of where odyssey is yeah i've come to the conclusion i think it might be in indiana oh not illinois my that's my thought okay of what i've heard and things like that um yeah it, that was that was my so my first thought was that it was in Illinois because of everything with Chicago. Right. But because they fly there, it's got to be 
kind of farther yeah, away. Yeah, but there's so much Chicago. You'd think if it was in Indiana, they'd just go Indianapolis. True. True. Which makes me feel kind of like it's in Illinois. But like Maybe Illinois, very like, southern like, Illinois? That's what I was going to say. Is, is Chicago's dang near the top, and it's yeah. a long state. Yeah. So. We could be towards the bottom. Yeah. But we need to we need to explore Odyssey's climate and see where we can pinpoint it. Oh my word! If we can prove that yeah. it's a bit more humid and uh, warm, then yeah, I let's think see we if can... we can lock down where Odyssey is and how old every character is. <laughs> Please and thank you. That's that's our next podcast. <laughs> no, that oh man, there that is no exhausting. satisfying. I have rabbit holed so far on those things. There are a couple like really in depth threads on some of the forums and yeah. also like blog posts and all this stuff. And the answer is there's no answer. There there is no answer. It, it there whatever the age makes sense Basically. for the storyline. <laughs> and Wit will never die, except for his voice actor, who will die many times. <laughs> on that depressing note, um uh Dent also um brings up that the that armitage was likely murdered mm -hmm. that yeah. the um that the it wasn't uh, what it seems right isn't that what he yeah. said yeah like, yeah Andromeda his death isn't wasn't what it seems. seems yeah he didn't go which plays off the idea that we had this really aggressively pro uh progressing brain tumor last right. episode yep um which is huge and like oh no yep Thank you, Paul McCusker, for warning me, and now I can grab my my parents. Yep, I'm I have much fear. Yep. Uh, anything. All right. Then then back with the with Wit and the Dean, um, we get Aram showing up. Mm -hmm. So he pops on to the computer, and Wit's talking with him while um, the Dean runs out to try and find like security to get it traced. What if, what if Aram messed it up just a little bit and he pops up on a computer that instead of being like right next to them was just like kind of on the opposite side of the lab and he was like, yeah. and it's like really faint. Like, did you hear that? No. What? And they keep talking and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if, the air, if it was it's, anything other than absolutely perfect, it would have been hilarious. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, and that's always the thing. It's just like, how does he know who is where doing what? Yeah. Like, is he just popping up onto I mean, a, there's security cameras, I suppose, but. Maybe. He, but he's just popping up to a computer, like, probably like the Dean's computer. Yeah. Is he trying to communicate with the dean, or does he realize Wit's there and wants to talk to Wit? Like, yeah. it's very, very unclear and just yeah. kind of plot convenient. The only way that I can explain it is that he's hacked into their system. He must have access to their security cameras. That would be my guess, but yep. even then, that doesn't explain a lot of the stuff in Wit's end because they don't have security cameras there, as been clearly. Right, stated. and also, like, why is he specifically trying to communicate with children? purity innocence <laughs> i don't know yeah. untainted minds perhaps yeah uh he's yeah he's, he's wherever he's wherever they need him to be and i'm kind of okay with that oh i'm 100 percent okay with it <laughs> um and so wit manages to set up a meeting with him yeah aram's initially hesitant but wit sets up a meeting with him at the skyline hotel at 6 30 which is an hour and a half from now very clear yeah this episode is obsessed with time, time. stamps. Yeah, in a exactly. way that no episode of Adventures in Odyssey ever has, has been. ever been. Because it's Jack and Joanne are meeting at five thirty with Dent. Mm -hmm. Then they are taking a seven o'clock flight. Yeah, at six thirty, which is an hour and a half from now, Wit is going to meet at the Skyline Hotel, and then later on, um, Mitch tells Connie to be on Wit's computer at five forty-five, mm -hmm. and then. Aram, um, talking to Connie, says that she needs to do something at 5.50. Yeah. Which she's like, There's that's so a minute from now. That. Yeah. And I was just, I was madly taking notes because I was like, this is so Why? nuts. Why? But, that's a lot of clarity. But yeah. So our next, our next thing is uh, Mitch finally finds Connie mm -hmm. at Witsend. Yep. In she, the broom closet. 
He sees her, she ducks into the bloom cr- closet, pretends to clean the bloom cr- broom closet. The bloom closet. <laughs> this is my favorite Adventures in Odyssey episode. The bloom uh, closet. Yeah. He is trying to... Yeah. Um, Mitch sees Connie. She ducks into the broom closet. Yep. Um, Mitch pursues connie yes and and finds her in there and she says she's cleaning the broom closet because broom closets need to be cleaned too you know yep. and, and she's and, doing it in the dark yeah. because the light bulb needed polished yeah yeah she's it's like why are you doing it in the dark well, i haven't gotten to dusting the light bulb yet like, yeah oh my gosh yeah and then i and think then, my note is well now that's like <laughs> this is where connie gives us our dumb sense of humor for the episode <laughs> so so she um she and Mitch have to have a conversation and she has the line that like it must be so like this conversation between the two of them must be so prominent in my brain because yeah. listening to it I was like I could have swore they said these exact words a couple episodes previous they yeah. didn't but it just it was just like I, could, I remember it so I could clearly. recite it yeah. perfectly and so I was like didn't I've they heard, already do this? Yeah, is this recycled audio? Yeah, that I the legit thought like is this, but recycled audio, and it's not. No, but but she says she feels like she's dating the Pentagon. Yep. Um, and then and then he's kind of grilling him about you know having his secrets and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and and when's the magical moment that I'm gonna trust you? Right. Yeah. Is that, that's yep. Episode, magical yeah. moment. I'm gonna trust you. She also throws down like, like my only secrets that i'm afraid of so stay for which is a running, running joke yeah. in this <laughs> yeah. um and it's fantastic and then she's like you're mitch is like you're, you're afraid, afraid of stay force and to which she responds well not like they're just sitting on a table but like using yeah. them which is clarity that we've never had about her staple thank fear goodness before. we're fleshing out this idea i i genuinely love it though it's so good it's so funny but i love it um and then, but, yeah. and then, but then you get the whole bit where she's like, like, I'm, I'm an open book kind of person. Like I yep. don't do well with secrets. I want to talk about things, Yep. which is like really good and like very good character development for her as a person. Like, yep. you know, just creates the added sympathy to like, there's a lot happening and the one person that I want to trust the most because I like him the most is being secretive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so then Mitch is like okay well just just ask me anything yeah, anything um and she she's just like who, who who's, who's the, the girl, girl in the, the picture brief? yeah um and your briefcase and, <laughs> and he's just like oh, I, I, I can't tell you that and then she she does this whole like chain of questions and he's just like oh, like i, I can't I, tell I, you that either. i can't yeah and it's like yeah, it's so rough because it's like he just said, like, I can tell you anything. And yet you're totally, I totally sympathize with Mitch. And like, oh, like he, like, it's he wants a really good. so bad to be open with her. Yeah, it's such a good portrayal of his inner turmoil because mm-hmm. he likes her so much. Mm-hmm. He wants this to, like, he clearly yeah, wants. I mean, doesn't he say it later? Like, I don't want to lose you, Connie. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, he wants this so bad, but there as we find out by the end of this there's a lot going on in his life and he's trying to juggle and he has there's a lot secrets a lot for him. right that is exactly he's dealing he, like he is so far in over his head and at the same time is head over heels yeah for connie Ooh, very yeah. nice turn of phrase i know i am he's on yep. it I am. I'm on the ball. Man. I'm on the ball. <laughs> All right. So, he, so he's basically like, I can't give you any answers. She's like, Well, when can I get them? And and he's like, Um, soon. Doesn't that yeah. what he says? Well, he says, Be on Wit's computer at five forty-five. Yeah. Ten um, times I can't tell you anything else. Just just do that. Yeah. And she was like, Okay. Okay. And uh, oh, which and is also, which is a big deal because even as a listener, if you haven't heard that yet, like yeah. that's a big clue that like. Uh, she, he says somebody's going to come on that will explain things or something yep. like that. And she's like, and he, then he, like as he's walking, he's like, if you want information about Eugene, get yeah. on. And yeah. she's like, what? What? And as an audience member, you're like, what? <laughs> Mitch, like, because Mitch and Eugene field. have had no scenes together. Yeah. So unless you count Rodney as Mitch, 
Which we don't. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. But it's... Yeah, they've had no interaction. So it's it's one of those things where you're like, how do you even... Like, this scene doesn't make sense. Um, But it's... Yeah, it's this thing of just... But, yeah. and, that, and, and that as an audience member is like the big clue that like Mitch is much more than just, you know, public rep at right. Novacom. Like, yep. oh shoot, he's in this too. Yep. Um, more so than, you know, what we previously assumed. Uh, and obviously that culminates later in the episode. Um, yep. But then we, is that, this is when we cut to the car chase, correct? Yep. Well, Our so lap. not quite the car the chase, rendezvous. but yes. So... We are in the car with um, this cab driver mm-hmm. who is driving um, uh, driving Jack yeah. to meet up with Dent. So he's mm-hmm. taken to the Andromeda headquarters. The cab driver's just kind of like, he's just a fun Chicago yeah, cab driver. Yeah, well, he's Nick Stoppelganger is who it yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, is, he is very Nick-esque. He's voiced by David Griffin, who's the voice of Jimmy Barkley. Oh! Oh, interesting. So that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I just, can totally hear it now. Yeah, just like a really fun way to get. And they do this quite a bit where they'll bring back in people who voiced characters as kids just yeah. for like bit parts. Yeah. Um I think we might have covered it, but during like a lot of the the Connellsville WE stuff, we get yeah. a lot of like the kid actors back in for that playing mm-hmm. playing. Adults. completely different yeah. right grown-ups so it's just it's just a fun thing that you can do when you're a purely audio show yeah well and also a like thing that you know really uh i would say it's like fan service almost yeah it is like, it is very fan servicey so like and that's also really cool like, about the yeah show. it's 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 an easter egg yeah but 100 percent. but yeah it's also just a fun way to get yeah get a guy in who like like Jimmy was the main character of Odyssey, for a, for a very basically, long time. like at least the main kid. Yeah, him and Lucy kind of shared that role for, during that era. Yeah. but but he's yeah he he was a big deal, and it's and because there's not a lot of turnover with the writers and directors and stuff for the show, mm-hmm. it's clear that they're just like that was someone we enjoyed working with a ton. We'll we bring him we back don't in. have a way to like really make them a character, but we can we can bring him back in just for this you know one off jokey like yeah, and it's a fun role for yeah. him. Oh, like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure. Hey, whatever you say, man. The mood is running. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, he gets to the and like okay, pit stop. The sound engineering while he's in the cab is fantastic. Yep. This whole scene is incredibly like maybe it's just because I've listened to it so many times, but this whole scene is absolutely fantastic. Um they really really do a good job in like you know the sound of getting in getting out of a car like the road noise is kind of muffled because he's in the car but it's very much there you're very much in a city and then maybe and maybe it's just because i've listened to it so many times but it also i think is a credit to them yeah that i can imagine it so clearly um it's it's very very like enthralling Mm -hmm. and well and also and i think you get that because they bring it into a place that you know right like i think that that's helpful like imagine a skyscraper in um in you know chicago and then you know a dumpster in the alley next to it like you can totally picture that you know easier than you can picture anything in odyssey because it's not a tangible place yep so so we just at this point all we get is um, is the, the him jumping in the cab and saying let's go? Yeah, and then we jump back to Wit's End mm-hmm. where it's now five forty five. Um, which like the problem with them constantly cutting back and with all the timestamps and the fact that they're cutting back and forth between Chicago and Odyssey is the things are not happening concurrently. Yeah, because Jack is hopping in the car to get to a 5 30 meeting while connie is sitting in the office at 4 4 at 5 45 for a call for like that yeah um, for um for her uh run, internet run. rendezvous yeah <laughs> i am date yeah um and so alex walks into uh wit's office he's looking for connie to ask mm-hmm. her a question and um and then she ends up kind of roping him in to make sure 
things are good on the technical side of things and whatnot. Yeah. Have you ever used um, Instant Messenger before? Oh boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And now I'm online, and then and then Aram pops up, and uh, Alex is there. Yeah. Well, yeah. So the reason Alex is up there is because he's he wants to find out information about Eugene. Yeah. He was he goes through like a very Ant Man ask. This yeah. person told me this, and that yeah. person told me that, and da 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 da. And here's the information I have. He also throws in that like a Wooten power boy, yeah. is like is like Doctor Cabodi has kidnapped him to find out Power Boy's you know weakness. Stash of or, shining arrows. Yeah. It's it's, it's so good. It's, it's so really good. it's Who told really you that? funny. Wooten. Wooten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah told uh, you that last one which is like and especially these because he wooten comes back i think in the next episode too where he's just like yeah his character just punctuates it so well like yeah, I, I i love i love his character in this series yeah it's it's, it's really cool. fun contrast yeah exactly so so then aram shows up mm-hmm. on wit's computer yep and says like hello connie yeah um which is oddly creepy it is very creepy and alex is like i'm getting out of here i'm yeah. not dealing with aram and connie's like well i'll i'll like vouch for your parents just just stay yeah like she doesn't really want to be alone with this but then she completely ignores everything alex says yeah in a very cow-esque way of course um uh <laughs> then aram shows up and she her first response is please go away yeah which she says out loud and alex is like uh, that's what I wanted to do, and tries to walk out, and she's like, no, 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 I was talking to Aram, and it's like, obviously, it's an audio show, I you have totally to have get that this is how yeah. they have to do it, but if she just typed it out instead of saying it, we wouldn't have that's this awkward probably, confusion yeah. of Alex being like, okay, I'll leave. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fine, that's exactly what I wanted to do. But, but yeah. Moving in that, yeah. Um, and- oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Alex, uh, says that Aaron's probably going to try and delete Wit's End. Yeah, which, which is, is a really good line. Yeah, and, and that's another, another line uh, that, 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 yep, sticks in my head. Yeah, that you just remember. That one. He's probably going to delete Wit's End. Yep. Uh, and then something, and then he says something later, like, I'm, you know, you don't want to stay in the line with him too long because he'll, he'll hack into the system or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and, like, blow up the city block. Like, yeah, it'll set yeah. off a chain reaction. Yeah. <laughs> or the, at one point, she's like, she's like, you why isn't he responding? And he's like, he's probably laughing so hard for you being this gullible. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's a good moment. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Alex is, is, it's important to have him there to kind of ease the tension a bit. Yeah. But Aram's basically like at 550, which is, which Alex is like, that's only one minute from now. I'm going to reroute a file wow. that's being uploaded from the college to Andromeda. He's going to reroute it to also show up on Wit's computer. Okay. Um, so Connie gets it. Um, Fancy. Yeah, not really how file transfer works, but it's... It's, it's like fine. a letter, isn't it? You send a letter in the mail, and he just yeah, knows, intercepted it and it. sends it to someone else. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and then, so, and this is this is where she's like, well, she kind of decides she is going to go through with it because she's like, I, Alex is like, you can't trust Aaron. And she's like, I don't trust Aaron, but like, I trust Mitch. Yeah. Which it's. A big moment. Yeah, because it's that, like, she's kind of in, like, fight-or-flight mode. Yeah. And then it, like, is, like, okay with saying, like, no, I I do actually trust Mitch. And, like, Mitch. like I don't trust Aaron, but I do trust Mitch, and, like, I don't think that Mitch would send, but send somebody that's going to hurt us. Yep. Which, you know, yeah. obviously a testament to how good guy Mitch is. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, definitely, definitely... Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> yep. And then we cut to Mitch um, saying, mm-hmm. good girl, Connie. Yeah, and then his apartment. Well, we find out then that it's that it's not his apartment. It's the hotel room. Yeah, the hotel room. But we hear it being broken, broken into. into. Uh-huh. Oh, what sounds like maybe like a window getting smashed or his yeah. door getting kicked in like that. Yeah. It's like a clear break in situation. Situation. And then we cut away from that drama drama yep. drama drama this is uh jack's been standing out by the dumpster because mm-hmm. that's where the cab driver dropped him off mm-hmm. um and he uh then a security guard comes out and is like you got to get out of here yeah no loitering yep 
And, and so he's like, okay, I didn't mean to be a nuisance. Yep. So he jumps back in the car with the cab yeah. driver whose meter's been running. And uh, as they start to pull away, Dent runs yeah. up. Um, and basically he hands Jack this envelope. Yeah. Um, I need you to take this package to Mr. Whitaker. Yes. <laughs> and then exactly. He goes, and then he goes... Um, uh, and then he yep. tells him about taking, you know, taking the next flight to Odyssey. Yep. Make sure you get um, on the next flight. And then he closes the door. Um, and then Jack calls Joanne. Well, and... Jack, so they start driving off. Yeah. And then we hear Charles grab yeah. Dent, Dent and call him a naughty boy. Right, you've been a naughty, naughty boy. Which, yeah. oh boy. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I understand you're, like bad guy villain but phrasing right. could be better yeah it's i don't know it's just like i don't why why would you call a, a grown man a naughty it's not boy? even established that he's english yeah like, yeah it is it is kind of weird but, but oh well but yeah we'll and then he past. he throws dent he throws dent in the car mm-hmm. they start following uh-huh. uh jack's cab and this is where another line that like has stuck with me yeah. to you know forever is jack's like can you try and lose him and the guy's like yep and jack's like put your pedal to the metal and he and the cab driver responds i've been waiting my whole life to hear someone say that yeah 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 which is so good good. so good (laughs) yep (laughs) it makes me so happy yeah and then like the you can hear the tires squealing you you hear the engine going and then he's like, move it, lady! <laughs> like, yep. He's yelling yeah. at traffic. Like, this very much, like, an already immersive scene just is so much better in that situation. Um, and so they're chasing him, and we get, I believe, Odyssey's first car chase, uh, especially an inner city one. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it might not be, but but sure. I mean, this yeah. is the only one that I can think of yeah. uh, that I know of. Yeah. And so uh, eventually they do lose him. Yeah. And then we cut back to the other car, yeah, the, with with the Dan driver, and Charles, Dan and Charles, and Charles says like right. once again like a very yeah. villainy line yeah. of just like driver. I think it's time for another experiment. experiment. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> like oh yeah, boy, of like oh we're dense. Like you won't you won't hurt me. I've got like too much. I know too much. And yeah, and he's like you are not as important as you think you are. Yeah, which is you know also quintessential bad guy thing. And then yep. he says you know like yeah, mm, very cheesy, but also very much like I understand that they need to especially with a younger audience, you kind of really need to make it as direct as possible what you should believe about this guy Yeah, based on how little interaction we've had with him. Um, yep. So, like, you know, I guess that makes sense. Uh, but it is kind of a, a thing. And um, But he says the thing that I find interesting is he says, uh, we know how much Mr. Dent loves those or something. He says something along those lines oh. like, this has happened before. Right. Um which Again. I don't know if we get that confirmed later or not. I don't remember specifically, yeah. but it, I think it is interesting to note that either Dent is aware of this, or this has already happened to Dent in, um, you know, this presumably torture. Yeah. Um, yep. Situation, which might kind of explain his weird frazzledness constantly. But... Yeah. That, yeah. That would that would do it, yeah. and his inability to remember Bernard's name. <laughs> that too. Um. Okay, and then. We go to Wit. He's in his car, and we hear, like, sirens and stuff mm-hmm. as he kind of pulls up once again. Just, like, yeah. beautiful picture painted by the audio. Yeah. Um, like, kind of like you think, like, a bad, you know, like a kind of, I mean, it's a hotel, but I think of, like, yeah. I think of like a Motel 6 situation. Yeah. And, like, yep. you know, he's pulling up into the parking lot, and he sees the flashing lights and everything. Yep. Very like, What's much going so. on? And then... Peter yeah. Boylan, FBI. Right. right, like it's summer and they're meeting at six thirty, but like it's clearly pitch black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in my mind. Cle- oh, so yeah. for me, it's it's overcast. This whole thing, uh, this whole time, it's overcast. It's overcast in Chicago. It's overcast here. Pulls in, steps out. It's probably a gravel parking lot where he parked. Uh, you know, crunching gravel. Boylan, FBI. You know, a detective walks up to Wit. Wit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like I was supposed to meet someone here, and they. It kind of seems like a chain of commands, kind of like yeah. it gets passed along, and yeah. a guy named uh, Borland comes up. 
um, and is like, uh, you know, why were you planning? Like, what were you doing here? Mm-hmm. And he's I was like, supposed I, to meet someone here. And he's yeah. Like, Whoa, who are you gonna meet? And then he says, Mitch, right? Yeah. And and he, um, well, Robert is, Mitchell. Yeah, Robert Mitchell. He and then they're like, he's, um, he's Aram. Yeah. They um, explain that. And he's like, Aram. His initials R M. Robert Mitchell. Mitchell. And it's we, not really that clever. Yeah. That's another line that sticks in my head a lot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And um. And so it's like, so you, you, you arrest Mitch? Like, yeah. what's, what's going on here? And, and, um, the FBI is like, we were planning on it, but someone got here first and killed him. Yeah. Robert Mitchell is dead. Yes. There's a line. Yep. Boy. Yeah. In that, like, 30 it's seconds, you're just like, so Mitch is all heavy. Right. Okay. Mitch is dead. Yeah. What? It's so, it's, such an escalation it's so heavy but it also feels like it was also paced really well and feels right yeah and it feels like and maybe you know just because i can picture it so well like this is you know the loose end being tied up of these individual plot threads like yeah yeah why was you know like why was mitch keeping all these secrets secrets? you know what is mitch's character is really tied up yeah and we get all really actually (laughs) right because he's dead Ah, we, we get Mitch. and we get all of the like we get all of the um the fact that all of his, all of Aram's appearances have been so tightly connected yeah. to like wit mm-hmm. and stuff that makes sense when you find out that it's Mitch yeah. um and and his um connection to wit's end and yeah. like showing up on the computers yeah. there and yeah and it's it's also it's it's interesting too cuz we get i mean we didn't hit on it but in that same kind of thing where Connie's like you know I trust Mitch she also starts rattling off uh, the all the stuff Aram's done and she's like you know that hasn't really been bad stuff has it yeah he's just been sending us stuff right like like maybe maybe he's actually maybe Mitch, or maybe Aram's a good guy yeah which is then a really good setup for her for then us to find out but like it's yeah. Mitch and like obviously a thousand questions yeah but also just the the like crazy i guess kind of plot can be like the whole thing of so he he's finally going to reveal himself to wit yeah and this is when people break into his house and kill him yeah and then that's also when the fbi ca- decide to show up yeah. like it's just this cascade of like all of these like these are like incredibly cr- huge but also very plot convenient yeah moments. yeah it is it is all just really and it's like i could see like maybe like if you know assuming andromeda is the people who who killed him like yeah you have this um with them like if they've been monitoring this for a while and so is the fbi so then maybe this like meet up with wit he's gonna out himself so then so then they're like, okay, now's the time to strike. Yeah. And and then maybe, like, the FBI is kind of like, we were going to bring him in, but, like, we, we showed up and he was dead. Yeah. I don't, what I don't fully know there is, is it a thing of, like, they showed up and found him, like, they, they were going to do it that same night and showed up yeah. and found him dead, or normal police found out that he was dead. Yeah. And then, like... Yeah, and then they contact, um, and then and then the FBI are reached out. Like I don't quite know logistically Which, what makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it would have been super, like super unsettling, but also like incredibly effective if like we showed up and, and found, found a dead, dead Mitch yeah. instead of instead of you know meeting up with aram there's just a dead mitch there yeah and then the fbi got involved yeah but like that would have been crazy and like i think i think this way of doing it makes more sense Mm -hmm. um the other way seems much more i don't know seems just not the kind of show that odyssey is yeah obviously like and and i think it is like that's that's a situation where 
you might be crossing a line that they really haven't crossed before, and they don't really feel like they need to. You yeah. Know? And I suppose they don't. Yeah. Um, and yeah, really, as an audience, things are moving too quickly to honestly question it. Like, Right. Just... Yeah. And it also, like, the impact of, like, just because of the audio show and stuff, we can't show Wit alone walking into this room, finding a dead mitch and then piecing together that mitch was aram and now he's dead yeah. it's much like it works structurally better for the fbi to be there and be like so here's all that happens yeah. happened um it is interesting to me how vocal the fbi is yo oh, yeah they're just like <laughs> they're very like conversational and like i part of it too is like Wit clearly has information that's yeah. beneficial to them. And so, like, I get it. But also, it's like, they we just needed He's to establish what was going on yeah. here. And so, and so it's... Yeah. We'll just spill all this crucial information. Yep. And um, then, is that... Is that it? Uh, that's it that's what the episode ends on. Yep. It just ends on the Robert Mitchell is dead. dead. <laughs> like, yeah. electric guitar outro. Yeah. Yep. Which is like... Oh my gosh, yeah. if I had a week to process that as a youth, <laughs> I yeah. would have been screwed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, like, as is, I still, like, have a rough time processing it. So. Well, and, and so, like, going, listening to it ahead of this, um, I, because the transitions are so similar, uh, and how I'm used to listening to it on disc, like, it just cuts right into the next one. Yeah. I didn't even know necessarily that the episode ended. Oh. For a split second, I was like... Because it, the well, we'll pick up on it. Well, because you you were you just had like the playlist or the album going or whatever, and you yeah. just jumped right into the next track. Yeah, and and yeah. you know, spoiler, it picks up where this episode yeah. leaves off. Um, yeah, shocker. And yeah, uh, it's almost like it's a four parter. I guess. Um, yeah, the only other thing that I want to hit on that just didn't make sense to bring up before now, but now that we know about the whole. Aram Mitch thing and makes mm. sense to get into this a little bit. Um, so the initial conceit of Aram mm -hmm. the was still the RM deal mm -hmm. and that he was going to be named after Richard Maxwell. Yeah. Who is or that like Aram was gonna be Richard Maxwell, who was a um someone from the Blackguard stories. Yeah, he was Blackguard's assistant. Yeah. He he was Dr. Richard Maxwell. Yeah. He was yeah, a kind of like a glorified henchman for yeah. for Blackguard, and then later becomes kind of instrumental and in, mm -hmm. and in bringing him down. It's it's but it, that changes the whole thing so much. Yeah, and it's it it does change it because like if you think about Novacom being its own standalone thing, right? Now suddenly, if Richard Maxwell is that one, we lose all the Kanye and Mitch stuff. Two, right. It somehow makes Adventures in Odyssey still very much a blackguard centric series. Yes, and I think it does itself a very good service by moving past that and yeah. just like, like accepting that there are other bad guys that can be behind things, and not everything is tied to that. Um, yeah, because I don't. No, after Blackguard returns, that like that That's, series, I don't think no. we'll hear of anything. No, and I'm glad because like that is a really key defining point in odyssey mm -hmm. and it's good and it has its merits but the it need to continue well the need to continually try and go back to it i just don't feel like i think i think it's so much better that novacom is just its own thing yeah so like it's awesome that the guy who was gonna voice like the previous voice of richard maxwell just like couldn't fit it in scheduling wise yeah so they like rewrote stuff yeah i um, mean i think i can i don't know how they would have rewrote it like how they would have written it originally it's, it's gotta be like this had to be early in the con on, in the conceit yeah of what this saga was gonna be because like mitch is in there pretty close to the beginning and mm -hmm. obviously a big deal yeah oh yeah and like I mean, all that we've talked about with the relationship aspect of Connie and Mitch and how much we like yeah. it and how much it adds to the story and how much it brings yeah. an otherwise kind of an accessory character yeah. into the plot. Like, I 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that it would have been a much worse series if it wasn't for that. Yeah. Um, still would have been fantastic, but it would have probably not been quite as... I don't know. Yeah, just it wouldn't quality. stand on its own as much. It yeah. would feel it would feel more derivative. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, this of feels course, uh, of course, of course, original. Yeah, um, this is so, all yeah. its own thing. Yeah, I loved this episode. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There yeah. is so many big things that happen. There's so much important stuff. We get like a more fleshed out evil Charles. Yeah. Where he was always kind of like we connect the dots and like yeah. we get who he is. But now we know like he's straight up torturing people. Yeah. Presumably. We get, you know, Mitch and Connie's relationship starting to like starting to come to a place of where they're in a good place and then abruptly ending. And it's also all geographically coming back to Odyssey. Yep. Which is a, another big thing. We're as converging well. on Odyssey. Yeah. Yeah. Almost colliding, if you will. Yeah. Cheese smile. But yeah, it is. It's it's fantastic. Like, really good. Yeah. Yeah. The. Oh, man. There's so many good lines. Yeah. So They're many. all really good. And. Yeah. The. Yeah. The, also, there's, there's something kind of poetic about mitch's last act being one where it's kind like it's on one hand to some extent opening up to connie yeah but it's also like this it's the thing that we've realized that aram's been doing the whole time of like trying to bring some andromeda novacom things into the light yeah um and so it's that it's that combo and just for his his final words to be you know yeah, good, good girl, girl connie, connie is just like, like heartbreaking just like ah yeah he gone yeah and he gone yeah and we'll we'll, it hurts. we'll talk about it next week but like there's the aftermath of this is significant as mm-hmm. it should be yeah um but yeah that's that's it. That's it for for now. A chipper um, episode. Yep. Yeah. Real. So many. So many jokes. Oh yeah. Many jokes. <laughs> I'm glad you. This, this oh. is listed under the comedy section of podcast apps. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Is it? I I forget what it's listed under. It might yeah. under be under TV film. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's a hard show. It is. Put in a put in a spot. I don't but. like to be put in a box, man. Uh, do you have anything to pimp out? Uh, not not of my own stuff. um yeah so neither do i okay oh and uh if uh we should i'll put a link in the in the notes for this episode but uh andrew and i got to do an interview with uh gracie from uh welcome to odyssey it's uh it's an adventures in odyssey blog so we got that set up and it was that was that was a good time so i'll yeah put put a link in there for you guys to to read that if you're I don't know if you're interested and knowing more about us. Yeah, we're, and we're, what complex personalities we are. Yeah, we're we're <laughs> very very interesting. So that's that's all I've got for this. Feels this a bit episode. anticlimactic. Yeah, given everything. Yeah, no no kidding. But uh, see you around the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Wadfam Chalk Pod is a presentation of the Lidditz Podcast Cooperative. This show is a fan podcast and has no official affiliation with Adventures in Odyssey or Focus on the Family. As such, the copyright is ours under Creative Commons. Follow the podcast at WadfamChalkPod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at WadfamChalkPod at gmail.com. Episode 14, Plan B Part 2, Collision Course, was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Sabo, and edited by Dylan Weaver. And I'm Nathan Haverstick. Hoping you'll join us next time for more of the Wadfam Chalk Pod.